What's up guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to quickly and properly deform your meshes. So I still see people doing the usual way, which is literally adding a cube. And um, let's move the cube up. Usually they just add a cube, they add some subdivisions in it like this, and then they still use proportional editing going up here and use like, I don't know, a sphere fall off or something. And they use this to deform. That's probably a terrible fall off, isn't it? Yeah, they're still using this method to deform. And it works, right? I mean, it gets the job done. It's okay. Uh, but it really compresses the geo in here. This is probably going to cause tons of issues, especially once you start working with booleans and things like that. This is, um, this is not a way I'd recommend doing things unless you have like a very specific circumstance once you might need proportional editing. So the correct way, in my opinion, to do this is with a lattice. And some of you know what lattices are. They're really easy to use. Real quick before the video starts, just want to shout out our Patreon. January is coming up very soon, and on the 1st you're going to have access to this brand new tutorial on how to make this sci-fi gun from scratch do materials, decals, rendering, all that good stuff. So definitely take a look for that on the first. Link to our Patreon is in the description. So this shouldn't take more than like a minute or two to explain. So basically you come in here, and I'm just gonna scale this down to make a unique looking object, I suppose. Make this a bit skinnier and apply the scale. Okay, so say we want to deform this thing kind of like we just did earlier on. So first of all, if we try to deform this, we're going to need more subdivisions because right now any deformations is barely going to make a difference, going to affect the whole mesh. So we want to get in here and add in some loops just to make it a bit more dense to work with. So I'll just come in here and I'll be reasonable with it so it's not super dense, but roughly uh, all made of um, squares so that way it's pretty even. But yeah, this should be okay. So now we have a lot more geo to work with for deforming purposes. So the correct way with a lattice to do this is to first of all add a lattice shift a add in a lattice and if you have hard ops you can literally just press q and add a lattice in here and it gets set up for you but in vanilla which i'll show you here you just go in here add a lattice and you basically just kind of fit it inside the bounds you want to edit in this case i want to edit the whole entire mesh so i'll come in here and um we'll just kind of get in and then go to the front as well and scale this down just a bit and now it's encapsulating the whole thing. So this lattice here is basically a deformation variable. You can use the lattice to manipulate areas within the lattice without um, having to touch the geometry itself. So what I could do with the lattice here for example is go to the lattice settings and maybe increase the uh, resolution a bit. UVW is basically XYZ, it's just UVW to not confuse you. So we could go in here and maybe add in like one on the X and then a few on the Z. That should be okay. And if the higher you go, the less area is gonna be deformed. So for example, if I wanted just this area here to be deformed, then you're gonna see whenever I move these vertices only, oh, by the way, I forgot to say, uh, on the actual object, make sure you add a lattice modifier. I tend to forget that when I'm doing it in vanilla and then choose the lattice. Okay, so now when you actually use the lattice, it should deform with it. There we go. So yeah, now you're going to see anything on these, whenever I move these vertices, it deforms up to these points. So I just kind of move this around and you're going to see it deforms it very nicely for me. And then I could maybe come back here and move this back a bit, move it down. You can do all sorts of things for the deforming. Maybe come to this area, pull that back. And watch what happens if we go in here and maybe increase the Z values. You're going to see it actually adapts with it, which is pretty cool. Now, I tend to not do it that way just because sometimes it collapses the geo when I don't want it to. But, like, I could go in here and maybe increase the, oh, let's see, the V is probably not going to do anything. But you have more, like, pivot points if you wanted to use that. So, yeah, in this case, you know, you can add as many different resolution values as you want and it's gonna give you a lot more control points to work with. So in this case, we don't need that many. We need like one there. And you can literally just get in here and move this around and deform this however you want to deform it. So maybe I'll move that back, move this back a bit more. Um, I could move this up. Pretty cool stuff. But what I wanna do is just do a very basic example. So I'm gonna just move these back a bit manually. 
Okay, so basically once you're done with deforming the object, you can go in here and apply the lattice. And we're going to, of course, shade it smooth, auto smooth. And uh, you can delete out the lattice. And just like that, you have a pretty decently deformed mesh. And as you can see, it, um, it doesn't compress the geo as much as if you did it the sloppy way. I mean, yes, it pushes the geo together as a result of the lattice, but I find it's a lot more cleaner and constant in terms of uh, how the effect looks. So then at this point, I could perhaps go in here and um, shift G coplanar. We can fill this into an end gone because we don't need all that geo. We could probably come in here and clean up these as well because that's not affecting the actual curvature, but in this case, I'll just leave it just, just so I have, you know, room for booleans. And you know, you can make all sorts of different designs. Come in here, run a chamfer. You could maybe dissolve out these areas so you have some room for a bevel. And maybe bevel the front with control B. And you have a nice little bevel there. You know, you can run your booleans. You can do like whatever you want. It's the same strategy, but just be careful because when it gets more curvy, uh, of course, your um, your booleans are going get to get a bit more messy in terms of shading. So, yeah, that's um, the best way, in my opinion, to deform things in hard surface. And it's a method that I use a lot. So hope this video helped you. It's a very simple concept. I want to see more people using Lattice because people tend to think it's like something that's there, never to be used. It's there for a reason, right? So use it when you can. It's really helpful. So that's it for today's video, and I'll see you on... Monday, hopefully.